Hello and welcome to another episode of Ericsson Live, everybody. We couldn't wait to get to you and that's why we're here a little bit early to make the most of Maryland's time. Today we are talking about how to visualize your bigger goals and um, if you are ready to achieve your bigger goals in a coaching context and you are ready to maybe sign up for a coaching training, become a coach yourself, I can very much recommend Experience Coach Training Online, um, which is a free webinar that lasts uh, two hours and even a little bit more um, and gives you a real taste of what it's like to, uh, to, to, yeah, to, to learn how to be a coach and how to step into that identity of being a coach um, online. And we have been doing that online for more than a decade. So that is definitely something that uh, we know how to do and um, for, for more than just uh, 18 months at this point. Um, so uh, since uh, Marilyn is, of course, busy and, uh, you know, has graciously agreed to carve out some of her precious time for us, I would like to get us started right away. Marilyn, as you all might know, is the founder of Ericsson Coaching International. Uh, she is also the originator of solution-focused coaching. She has written a whole slew of very, very interesting, very recommended books. Um, and that'll suffice for introductions this time. Um, you can watch any of our other episodes together for the full introduction, or you can go to ericsson.edu slash our people to find out more about Marilyn. But Marilyn, uh, welcome back to the stream. We're very, very glad to have you. Thank you, Fabian. Appreciate it. So, yeah, thank you. Um, so Marilyn, in um, yeah, and and Aladdin is is saying hi, and everybody as always. Um, what I appreciate, what Marilyn probably also very much appreciates, is the the global scale of the Ericsson community. So uh, when you're with us, let us know where you're joining us from, um, just so we have an idea of who we're talking to, um, and uh, also any questions that you might have. Please let us know so we can know how to serve you best. So Marilyn, I, I, I know that um, in Canada there's elections next year, in Germany the elections are coming up in the coming months, and I'm always reminded in these times when, when a country reformulates its vision and decides who do we want to be, what role do we want to play in the world, that, that one German chancellor famously said, if you have visions, please go see a doctor. <laughs> and it's something that that almost everybody in Germany knows where it's like what what he probably meant is that in politics and in life itself um it, it reality doesn't always conform to what we would like it to be and um, there's a lot of stakeholders involved and a lot of moving parts and so let's not be married too much to an ideal outcome but let's be flexible i you know, giving the benefit of the doubt, if I think that's something that, that he might have meant with that. Um, but for us as coaches in the space that we're in, why would you say it is useful, if not even imperative, to have a vision? Uh, well, Fabian, I would say that. And it's not so much have a vision as if there's a thing out there called a vision. It's develop the primary process of asking questions inward that take you to a whole uh, visual, um, if you like, um, strategy or plan or future, where you see some of the steps to get there as well. You've probably heard the, ter the phrase, a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, we're not talking about a static picture. Uh, when we humans ask, you know, what do I see looking forward that's the best solution here? Um, we start to see steps to get there. We start to see different variations and iterations. Uh, we get a lot more information than if we hit the wall of words that most people usually hit. Oh, I don't know what to do next. Oh, so and so said this, and so and so said that. See, our vision takes us to leadership. It takes us to inner uh, abilities to uh, choose a, uh, an effective uh, plan with 
effective steps and see look from the future back and see how we got there uh genuinely explore okay and then um i did talk to so and so and da 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 and we can see all of those things including voice because the visual cortex is by strong by far the strongest part of our capabilities so there was a lot <laughs> and by in, the way, in terms of coaching that's what makes Erickson coaching unique because our whole structure is focused on you developing those abilities so they're easy and natural so that you use them effectively with your clients and that means you get clients because you also see the best ways to build your own business all sorts of things fall out of that that allow for leadership yeah so if i if i try to translate that or to 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 kind of paraphrase that a little bit if we have a visual well it's it's not a picture it's it's more like a movie right it's it's like this this moving image because obviously if you if you look at your hard drive a a movie takes up much more space than a picture and so we engage the brain a lot more by imagining a, a moving image and us in in the middle of all these changes we're trying to create and the ripple effects that are going out. Um, so by doing that, by engaging our brain to the, you know, to the fullest of its capacity, ideally, we are able to tap into resources that, that are beyond words because words as useful as they are in communicating with each other, they, they can be quite limiting. And there is a certain aspect to our intuition, to our creativity that that cannot be kind of confined by words. Is that is that a fair representation of part of what you just said? Well, yeah. Uh, words, by the way, are linear. One word follows another into a sentence. And if you've ever been writing down good ideas from a lecture, the lecture is far ahead of you by the time you've written two sentences down. Because they're linear. And what's more, they're very specific. Whereas a vision, when you ask, so what are some ways I might accomplish that? Our inner uh, visual guide starts finding examples. And we start seeing an example and then another one and another. And, and what's more, we um, can start to ask the kinds of questions that take us, and this is what you'll be learning in coaching, up to what we call the being level of uh, what we're attempting to accomplish. See, there's the doing level, and that's really important in these pictures. What are we doing and how are we doing it? Uh, but there's the being level, which is who do I want to be as a leader in this circumstance? Uh, for these other people and we see ourselves acting effectively being that kind of leader now you need a coach who's asking the kinds of questions that link all of this together effectively and we've got different questioning groups in the art and science of coaching that do exactly that so it's not only who are you being for others it's also um who do you see yourself becoming as you develop certain learning steps? Who do you see yourself uh, challenging? How are you interacting with other people? Uh, and um, this becoming level allows for us to do exactly and become exactly what we see. Yeah, it's what always comes to mind to me is as wonderful and as amazing as our brain is, our capacities are actually quite limited, right? So it cannot always be about doing because we can only do so many things at the same time. We can only have so many chunks of information in our conscious awareness at the same time. So once we step into an identity and we almost involuntarily react to things a certain way, that's when we really show up in a way that 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 makes a big difference and that's why i was really heartened last friday i had a class a coaching class and and people reported oh i catch myself 
uh, showing up in a coaching way. And I'm like, great, this is now showing that it's working. You are already stepping into the being level on being a coach. And it's no longer something where you're learning a technique or you are employing something or it's about, you know, sitting down and saying, now we have a coaching session, but you're, you're being a coach. And that is hard to describe how different that is from doing coaching. So you talked, nice to, thank you. Um, so you talked about aligning, you know, these certain levels and these certain, the, these certain, these certain areas. And and Gianluca is actually asking us a question about alignment as well. He asks, when looking at the long term, desires may be different from needs. What might be some of the best questions we can ask ourselves to align them best? Uh, well. It's a good question, Jan Luca. I'm glad to hear from you. Um, there's a lot involved here. First of all, we need to notice what level the desire is on. Is it uh, uh, see our desires uh, may be more at there's three different levels. Uh, let's just um, talk about them. One is who you are becoming, who you're being. One is what you're doing etc cetera, etc cetera. and the third level is what you want to have in your life the having level and a lot of our desires are on the having level i want to have a comfortable lifestyle i want to have you know a family these are wonderful things to want to have however um when we're working with a coach they're much more minor than who we're going to be in this lifetime who we're becoming as a leader, uh, that's the area of what we call uh, right hemisphere thinking. It's where you're developing yourself. And the left hemisphere is much more about the routine, day-to-day -day doing and having uh, of uh, a normalized lifestyle. It's very much more specific. Now, I'm a neuroscientist. I really focus on uh, energizing, if you like, the neuroscience responses that allow us to use our brain most effectively. And that's really an important part of uh, all aspects of our life as a, a coach and as a leader. The art and science of coaching is all about this neuroscience so that you gradually build the habits. And it takes a little while to build habits where you are actually being a coach. Then you align all the way down. See, once you get clear on being, then the doing and the having fall in place and you don't get pulled around by your desires. Yeah, you don't get pulled around by your desires. <laughs> I think that's a really nice way of putting it. Um, and that actually ties into a question that I was I was going to put to you. Let's see if, if, if there's a new aspect to this when I ask it. Um, so a lot of times people come to coaches and they say, look, I, I've had, I have to find some motivation. I have these long-term goals, but I can't bring myself to do them. Like I can't find the motivation or I get so busy all the time. Like it's always drowned out by, by other things. And can you just, can you just make me motivated is something that a lot of people want from coaches. What would you say to that? Well, again, I think we're right on the... Well, Marilyn, I think um, you put yourself on mute. Could that be? For some reason, I can't hear you right now. I'm on full blast. Um, not on there, mute. There you are. Everything's good now. Okay. Yeah, no, I wasn't on mute. I didn't change anything. So um, I'll start again. Yes, please. If I, I go mute, wave your hands, mm -hmm. etc. Okay, so uh, again, I think we're on the same track, being, doing, and having. Uh, motivation comes from the being level. Now, we get motivated if, if what we've got is an aim or a purpose or a direction that's inspiring us, really inspiring us, then we see the steps to get it done and we're eagerly moving towards it. Remember when you were a kid and some inspirational aim just got you fired up or even something today 
where it's, you know, this is my goal. I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I want to do it. And that inspiration is at the being doing level. Now, if you have other people's requirements, your job is to do this and this and this so that you have your job. Notice it doesn't ever have that same quality of inspiration. Uh, Good leaders build inspiration into their jobs and they assist their employees to build inspiration into their jobs, taking on that aim as something of their own. And that Uh, those are the skills. That's why we're bringing coaching into so many companies because a lot of uh, very top-down leaders don't understand that. They think because they are naturally inspired, other people must be as well or they're broken in some ways. In fact, no, no, no. It's not that way at all. People need to be linked. Their aims need to be linked to the company's aims. Their mission needs to be linked to the company's mission. And we can do that through vision, through value, through noticing the growth of capabilities, through noticing how people are naturally developmental. And we just need to assist them to link it together. Is that useful? Very useful. I especially like the phrase, people are naturally developmental. So, so just that, 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 that image that we were talking about is not static. People are not static as well. People want to move forward. They want to develop. They want to become leaders in their own right, most mm-hmm. likely. Um, so what I think that, that transforms a lot of discussions already is if, if I am seeing that intern or that new hire as a future leader, that I want to move my comp- that I want to move my company forward, um, then how do I treat that person? Um, do I just have them copy a bunch of things and get me coffee, or do I entrust them with little projects that they can call their own and they can be proud of and they can fulfill and bring some of the creativity to? Yay! Yeah. Nicely put, Fabian. Thank you. Um, so since we're talking about envisioning the the bigger goals um, and aspiring and being aspirational, how do I know that my goals are big enough? How do I know that that what I think is revolutionary and amazing and really far-fetched right now um, is really fulfilling my potential? Or, or, Or like, when do I know, when do I have that feeling of completion? If we're talking four quadrants, when in that top quadrant, when do I know that that, Enough is enough. (laughs) Well, uh, see, that's where it's entirely personal. Uh, What makes your goals meaningful is truly coming from your own essence here. Um, One great thing, again, is visualization. Seeing yourself five years out, having accomplished that, and seeing the results in your life, is that truly Uh, something that makes you proud and happy? Is it the kind of legacy you want to leave? Is it the quality of magic moments you want to build? Is the results, do they stand on their own for other people? Is it uh, going to shift and develop your capabilities, this goal? So um, only we can decide if it's worthy of our attention and energy. Now, uh, is there more that you're adding to that, or am I touching what you're requesting here? No, no, you're definitely touching on that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just sometimes have the feeling that that there is an element of, you know, with... Uh, I'm going to sound like an old guy now, <laughs> but like an old soul. But with social media, with, you know, this constant comparison with other people, with um, always being bombarded with images that are highly streamlined, highly touched up and and really take a lot of effort, even though they seem like they just got created in the moment. Um, we are we are in a, in a in an environment where our brain, our a little more ancient instincts kick in, and we always are, intrinsically asking us, am I good enough? Is what I'm doing good enough? Because all these people out there, they seem to have figured out so much and I have all these problems. 
Um, so yeah, it's just like how how do we get to that point where we know that this is what I put all my weight behind and and I pursue it um, and and that that'll be it. That'll be great. Uh, well, I've never gotten there. <laughs> It's, you know, uh, the path of life, you know, the journey of life is really uh, a journey. And uh, we start down that road with uh, as much of a vision as we can garner. And the interesting thing is that vision is always vague. Have you ever noticed that, Fabian? Hmm. When you look five years out, it's not like you see the clear, bright crystal images of what's going to work and what's not going to work. These are vague images we build. And uh, the more we ask questions about them, the more we align to the questions, you know, why is this important to me? You know, you've probably heard of the exercise called the five whys. Mm. We need to ask it at least five times. So why would that result be important to me? And why would that result be important to me, etc.? And when we do that, we're genuinely seeing often a little more clarity in that picture. We're seeing some of the steps, but it's that's why our coaching is so important in itself because it's very easy to get down into the details as soon as we got, oh, I got an idea, boom, and away we go on that idea. But the idea is only one part of that uh, big picture. And uh, any of you uh, who've done the art and science of coaching know that we work with multiple goals in multiple areas. Uh, you may have heard of the life wheel. We need to look at our relationships and we need to look at our body and its well-being. And we need to look at our financial well-being and our friendship well-being and our um, all the different areas of learning that we're involved in. And all of these are part of what creates a satisfying life. And we're looking also at what's really meaningful. Do we have some kind of long-term vision? Do we have a legacy that we're willing to put energy into uh, for ourselves? And, and even as a parent with our family, how are we assisting our children with climate change? So it's not just one goal out there like a, the letter we send off with the one post stamp on it. No, we're, we're involved as human beings with this full spectrum self-development process. And coaching is always starting with what's important right now. Mm -hmm. So we always find ways that these things link together. If we keep asking inwardly, uh, the alignment does appear. And we know the best use of our time. I think climate change might be a really good um, issue to bring up, as, as you just did, because um, I feel it has become a little harder for people in during times of pandemic, during times when, you know, or just take the, the oil tanker that was blocking the Suez Canal for days on end. And all of a sudden, the world is in crisis because the, 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 the trade routes are blocked. And more and more increasing weather phenomena, etc. we might see that, you know, th things aren't static. So th things aren't in our control and things will happen all the time that disrupt and, 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 and completely change the way that, that we live at least for a while. So, so how, how do we even allow ourselves to have these bigger long-term goals when, you know, the, the whole reality might shift at any moment and, and, and how do we stay flexible around that and agile, if you will, so that we can still pursue our bigger goals, but are not thrown off course by, by even monumental shifts? Does it make, does the question make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, are very, um, I don't want to say dangerous times, but what's emerging is uh, a realm of hardship we haven't faced for uh, since the beginning of humanity. And uh, this is going to be something our children face. It's something 
we need to really become great parents and train our children in uh, their own inner commitment and their own capacity to uh, stay true to what's important. It also means that we need to be humble in terms of our expectations. Um, this is not a world where we can sit in our comfort zone. It's a world where there's lots and lots of hungry people and lots of lots of unvaccinated people. And on it goes where our ability and willingness to uh, uh, live within our means and share what we've got and be uh, really uh, a reach forward to the next generation and to the people around us, it's critical on this planet today. So um, I'm not sure exactly what to say here, except please do that. Add that into your goals. Add um, assisting the end of climate change into your goals. Get your electric vehicle. Get your, I'm going to rant for a minute, solar system um, on the roof, which Lawrence and I have done. We've got our electric vehicle and our solar system. But we can't just be cocky about that. There's so many people out there that are still um, in dire straits, and the world is getting fierce. I mean, with water issues, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we're facing. And lots of people can't live where they were born because deserts are appearing. We've got a lot of work to do as humanity. And we need to really think carefully about how we lead forward. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> how can we... <laughs> As coaches or aspiring coaches, uh, Ericsson has the slogan, changing the world one conversation at a time. How does coaching figure into all of this, do you think? Hugely, hugely. Because most people um, easily hit the stress zone. And the stress zone is where we sort of crunch down into our old emotional responses and we go back to... Um, almost a, a non-leadership position. Even if we're, we've got a leadership role, we don't act like a leader. We're watching how are other people seeing me? Are they critical of me? Uh, what can I do to make them feel happy? Rather than what needs to be done, how can I you know, fly this flag in a way that other people see why it's important? Uh, so, creating genuine leadership where we're committed to both our own companies, but to the uh, whole endeavor of our countries and our cultures and the rest of the world, because we're all in it together now. That's the true uh, endeavor of today. How do we focus on we rather than uh, you and I building a little coalition. Sorry for sounding a little bit fierce here, but it is a fierce time. Yeah, and it is easy to, like you said, to get into stress response, right? And it is easy to fall back into tribalism uh, and to kind of just say security means I have a bigger stick than you. Um, and I think the, the current pandemic has shown some some inspiring aspects of that, of international scientists coming together and sharing genomes and figuring out vaccines and that sort of thing. But there's also um, surprising gaps in empathy and in, in cooperation, despite a, a literal global threat that is very visible, as opposed to climate change, which is so gradual that you might sometimes not notice it. Um, mm -hmm. So I agree. I think coaching has a huge part in to play in creating awareness, creating genuine leadership, like you said, and, and helping people figure out what's best long term rather than being domineered by being being steered by ancient reflexes that are ingrained in our hardware that no longer serve us as a species as well as they used to when we were living in a, in a different context. Uh, yeah, it's very easy to blame others. And um uh... Uh, people have different styles. Uh, you know, I've been part of this cultural creative uh, outburst on the planet where 
all sorts of people are very international and they've got a lot of savoir faire and they can talk to anybody in any airport and they know how to share cultural events from, you know, the most uh, symphonic to the most local. And, you know, there's a huge group of people like that now on the planet, but they need to develop empathy for the ones that are left behind, the people who really need that education who really need that support of their uh, lifestyle, supporting them so they're not worried week to week and uh, feeding their children mouth to mouth. You know, it's a it's time for us to genuinely give back. Yeah. Well, Marilyn, um I, I know that you have, you know, a, a meeting right after this. In fact, the meeting is already in progress and you and you chose to to be here with us. So I don't want to infringe on your time too much. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think the appeal that you just made, I, I just want to let it stand. Um, is there anything else that that uh, you would like um uh, or, or maybe let, let's get your view on this one. Let's kind of bring it down kind of to the to the five meter level again. Um, so I always encourage people to um, to go if they haven't yet and be part of an experienced coach training online webinar um, because seeing is believing, you know, and being part of the experience uh, is, is much better than describing it. And you can get quite a bit of our, you know, of our, community spirit um by by watching these these live streams but but really learning the body of work that you have created over the years is is something else entirely um so i just wanted to get your your you know what would be your best argument for people to to step into a two-hour webinar and to just experience what it is like to to do coach training uh well my uh, challenge is to come with your questions as a potential coachee because as we bring coaching more and more into the corporate world, um, developing a great channel of communication between coach and coachee is the very same as having a great manager and a great employee. Uh, suddenly, the manager isn't managing. The employee is actually doing the thinking and the manager has the ability to uh, reap the rewards of the growth of the employee. And uh, see, we're all able to grow. Uh, the um, position where we look at people is so important. If we see them as somebody who's like the way they always are, we don't know how they could grow if we open the channel and ask the kinds of questions which inspire and demand their growth. So come as a coachee, come with some of your most difficult problems and the ones that sort of tug at your heart and actually explore what's it like to have a coach. That genuine, an Erickson coach particularly, because solution-focused coaching is what leads to development it's what opens that channel and uh, uh, yeah connect connect to yourself connect to your own heart and you'll be really surprised at how that connects into every area of your life so i highly recommend experience coaching i highly recommend if you're doing any kind of training in the next year you do a coaching training because you're working at the level of doing and being, not just having a technical res result. Great to have techniques, great to have skills, but those are only useful in a context where you can truly use them. So uh, I support uh, everyone who's listening to this broadcast to dive in. If you've done the art and science of coaching, come and do some of the other advanced programs that we're offering and genuinely move the marker on your own development. Yeah, or hey, if you have done the art and science of coaching already, come do it again. I cannot recommend it enough uh, because this is something, this is a bit of a secret that only facilitators and teaching assistants are kind of privy to is that 
the art and science of coaching has so many layers that every time you go through it, you go through it with a different facilitator, with a different group. And you're a different person. You can never cross the same river twice, right? You're, you're a different person. If you've already done modules one through four and you come back to module one, there's a whole new level of it that gets unlocked that you can look at um, that, that moves yourself forward. Um, so I am a big fan of, of doing the course more than once because it isn't the same experience. It's actually really, really rich. Um, yeah, but uh, so that's that, that's kind of my, my personal viewpoint there. All right, so thank you so much, Marilyn, uh, for gracing us with your presence. Uh, really appreciate your time. And everybody, um, go sign up for Experience Coach Training Online. The next iteration is tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. If that is a little too late for you, there are two webinars coming up in September that are more towards the beginning of the day and also palatable for, for Europe and, and, and Asia. So uh, keep an eye out for that. There's a link in the description that always gives you the, the next available webinar. Um, so happy to see you there. Keep in touch and um, yeah, keep changing the world one conversation at a time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Fabian. Talk to you later.